So, I think uh, the topic says again effect of nitrogen special effects specialty reactions due to the presence of nitrogen when I say nitrogen it is synonymous with other heterocycles, but uh, the our reference is nitrogen in heterocycle chemistry okay. and um, uh, today we talk about we take up uh, a special topic that is um, V N S. Uh, I think I told you before uh, it is uh, vicarious uh, nucleophilic substitutions. Substitutions. Uh, many of you have actually read this type of reactions, but it has never been categorized as vicarious substitution reactions. Uh, like many of uh, you know these uh, Sanger's reagent, right? Sanger's reagent is uh, 2, 4 dinitro uh, fluoro. Okay. What happens? I mean, if you just add a nucleophile, nitrogen nucleophile, the fluorine get uh, substituted. That means it's an if ipso substitutions. The place where, right? Yes, I mean, I mean this. Yes, if so, in the sense that the position where the uh, living group is occupied, that is being substituted. That's a typical one, right? That means uh, if you have a substituent ortho para to the nitrogen, then that's nicely substituted. But uh, then, uh, if you let us say um, uh, go to uh, let us say what happens uh, if you have a similar reaction like um, uh, bromine and uh, bromine here, and then again a nitro nitro is present nitro and then uh, it is a very simple reagent it is commonly available reagent potassium cyanide and ethanol and what you get is uh, reflux it uh, you get uh, something pretty uh, unusual right. So, uh, hypothetically rather in analogy with the Sanger's reagent one would expect that cyanide goes uh, uh, replace the bromine because that is ortho to the nitrogen and the other bromine is meta to the nitrogen right uh, right so in fact many most many many, many people outside bengal do not know actually <laughs> sorry actually i should not record this any case you have to edit it uh, uh, i should, i think at one point uh, we'll edit it okay any case uh, so uh, so what is the product then the product is is a nice product actually often we forget so So, it is this or you can say actually or or just just a reverse it basically that means, the carboxylic acid is getting introduced uh, into the nitro group. Uh, uh, Krishna did you know this, this reaction before uh, that is what I thought ok. Uh, any case, uh, so this is a kind of reaction called vicarious substitution which is unusual that is it. So, but it has no heterocycle here. So, if you look at I will have more examples actually in another class we will have only examples and examples on vicarious substitution. Uh, what you will see uh, for <coughs> let us look at a reaction this is actually uh, developed by a uh, Polish uh, scientist what he does he takes a nitro substituted compounds be it an aromatic be it a uh, simple heterocycle ok. In this case it is a nitro furan. What, what one would expect out of nitrofuran basically is some uh, electrophilic substitution, nucleophilic substitution reactions uh, traditional ones, but if you have a nucleophile like um, it is a sulfone especially sulfone carrying a living group carrying a living group that is the minimum requirement then or that means one of the substances should be having a nitro group the other would be having a nucleophile having a uh, living group in it ok. That means, the nucleophilic atom must carry the living group that means, in this case which one is living group in the presence of base uh, the ba in this case the base is uh, K O H and uh, solvent is liquid ammonia. So, all of us know under the condition uh, under the conditions uh, this uh, C H uh, C H uh, would form this anion here the C H 2 from the anion here and then you have a chlorine that all of us know that sulfone is so active act, uh, the uh, neighboring hydrogen is activated will form the carbon ion. So, sulfur substi sulfone substituted carbon ion now what now uh, I mean so obviously, it look for 
uh, an electrophilic center and in the nitrofuran uh, in this case this all you have I mean so many if you just look at the resonance uh, this 1, 2, uh, 3 position is um, electrophilic. Then if you further uh, delocalize the double bond the number 5 also would be nucleophilic, but in this particular example the reaction has taken place at the 3 position. Okay. So, um, and the product here I think uh, you can make out the product should be product here in these cases are very nice reactions. So, ortho substituted uh, nitro compound and uh, between the two groups sulfone and um, sulfone and um, chlorine, chlorine is expelled chlorine is expelled. Okay. So, I think uh, I do not have to write the mechanism or do I have to basically addition elimination taking place at a neighboring place that means, the intermediate uh, would look like uh, would look like a carbon ion here then CH 2 uh, SO 2 PH sorry CH CH and then CL uh, what next uh, what, uh, what next uh, in this case you, you, you can, one can quickly write that the probably the reactions also uh, in equilibrium is having an anion R here the anion is shifted and anion is shifted then you have to have a so 2 pH. So, this, that means this is a basically a equilibrium equilibrium. So, at in some point you will have some amount of anion here at the neighboring carbon. So, then one can quickly see that elimination taking place and obviously, the counter anion of the stronger acid would be between the sulfonic acid and HCl, HCl is more acidic corresponding uh, group is more uh, um, uh, uh, better living group. So, as a result, so uh, what you will find? So, at one point this should these are all should be, in, should be in bracketed and <coughs> and of course, the final step would be final step would be uh, this aromatizations. So, that means, uh, at some, uh, final step uh, it, this will form an ion here and this uh, arom heterocyclic aromatization is the driving force. So, eventually it will go to that and during the work up uh, you will get this. So, like this uh, there are plenty of examples plenty of examples it is a, it is a standard protocol now. If you have a nitro substituted compounds uh, be it heterocyclic or simple aromatics uh, and if you have a uh, nucleophile carrying the living group at the nucleophilic center <coughs> then there is a likelihood the reaction would proceed through vicarious substitution reactions. We will have more examples if the time permits we'll towards the end of the uh, semester and uh, let us we'll take one more example. One more example this is a nice example. Uh, in this case, it is a pyridine heterocycle, pyridine heterocycle, but uh, it requires a nitro group and the nitration uh, all of us know uh, takes place for the pyridine in the 3 position and then uh, in this case, this uh, is a uh, uh, 5 membered heterocycle again, 5 membered heterocycle uh, with this, uh, this 1 amino, uh, 1 amino here and a bit of uh, zinc chloride. I think you can understand the use of zinc chloride. Zinc chloride actually being used to activate a nitrogen uh, and uh, what else uh, do we require? We require a base. So, in this case potassium tertiary butoxide and solvent is required and this catalyst and this uh, reaction condition zero. zero now, <coughs> so what do you expect? So, if you uh, uh, do this little bit of uh, playing with resonance, so what you will see that uh, this position is uh, electrophilic in nature, this position is electrophilic in nature, and this position is electrophilic. The, all the three positions are equally probable, equally probable, um, but uh, in this example. Uh, the reaction has taken place at the 5 position that means, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 and this is 5 position the reaction has taken 5 positions. So, what is the product uh, by now uh, you should be able to tell me the uh, name of the product 
sorry this is the name of the product. <coughs> so, you know uh, because it is a vicarious substitution reaction. So, what I said uh, you have to have a uh, nucleophile uh, having a living group at the nucleophilic center. So, you have to basically look for in now you have enough of heterocyclic background in heterocyclic chemistry specification as well chemistry electron pair is delocalized toward the ring so, is not available. So, what is then available then here uh, this lone pair of the free amino this amino group the amino group. So, if this is the, uh, the nucleophile then what is the living group in this case the living group is heterocycle itself that means triazole the triazole is the living group. So, what is the product then? Uh, product is good very good that is it that is it that means it is a nice way of you see it is, it is a very good way of uh, it is amination and nucleophilic amination. So, I mean all of us know uh, uh, hydrogen uh, uh, hydrogenation means hydrogen uh, hydrogen addition, but uh, I mean but normally I mean an H2 group by nucleophilic addition is uh, very rare and this is in this case it is so easy one can do it without it. Okay. Uh, so, <coughs> then uh, so I think we will have more examples next time uh, let us look at one more I mean these are all special kind of reactions uh, uh, which is attributed to the presence of uh, nitrogen. This is another e reaction I think many of you know I guess uh, this uh, Hoffman Hoffman Loeffler uh, right free tag reactions what is it. So, basically what that is that's, I mean say you do not if you do not remember basically what you have to remember then that uh, nitrogen halogen center nitrogen halogen center this, is, this, is, this has to do with something like. Uh, so, let us say you have an amine uh, amine amine with a free NH free NH free NH. So, it is a radical kind of reactions. The rad so, uh, so long we had been dealing with let us say we know of uh, carbon radical. Now, carbon radical is very popular in organic chemistry of course. Now, this is a case of nitrogen radical. So, how do you do nitrogen radical? How, uh, I mean all of us know nitrogen radical is produced by simply NBS heating. If you do NBS heating nitrogen radical is produced halogen radical is produced. Now, between the two one of them reacts that is a halogen because halogen is more reactive. Right, but in, in this case, what you will see, uh, it is uh, a case of intramolecular reactions. Intramolecular reaction, and uh, if you uh, uh, take uh, NCS, N, uh, NCS is uh, N chlorosuccinamide, N chlorosuccinamide, and then a bit of little bit acid, and it could be heat or it could be light. It could be light. So what happens? So you get the corresponding. <coughs> so, this nitrogen is protected uh, this is the, so what do you get first NH nitrogen is replaced by NCS right and then you have an ammonium salt chloro ammonium salt chloro ammonium salt uh, which goes to which goes to this uh, chloro uh, this radical cation radical this cation radical this cation radical here R and R. What next? Proton abstractions in for photochemistry is typically I think you all know by, by now I mean uh, very few cases you will have exceptions. It will form either a 5 member ring or a 6 member ring that is it. This is a typical uh, guideline in uh, organic photochemistry. If you are thinking of uh, intramolecular reaction okay, just 5 and 4 uh, sorry 5 and 6 sorry. I am sorry, sorry, 5 and 6. So, in, let us say then uh, if a radical here, then uh, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, this hyd this hydrogen would be abstracted, this, hyd this hydrogen would be abstracted. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, uh, now this hydrogen is abstracted and right and uh, you will have a uh, well, 
uh, this uh, this is hydrogen <laughs> up here. So the, again, I have hydrogen and this carbon, and now you have a basically halogenated product. Halogenated product and halogenated product, and then uh, during workup, uh, if you want to specify it. So, uh, you have uh, 2 NH hydrogen. So, you will see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, what you will get? You will get a uh, 5 member heterocycle. So, you get a 5 member heterocycle and this and the substituent here and you have another substituent here. So, uh, this is uh, that means, uh, this is just an example of uh, a nitrogen radical, nitrogen radical. We have been exposed to carbon radical very frequently nitrogen radicals uh, are not very uh, common, but, uh, but these are the reactions many times very useful. Let me give you one more or two more examples. Uh, like say, uh, many of you know, uh, many of you know <coughs> many of you this molecule right. What is this molecule? Prolinester. Prolinester and, and what is the configuration here? This hydrogen, so hydrogen. This is S, right? Uh, how do you synthesize this? Uh, often we don't synthesize. We don't talk about the proline synthesis. But how to get the synthesis done for this? Obviously, uh, uh, you, uh, you have to have a starting metal, quite which is quite easy. But uh, <coughs> then the reaction, as usual. So I mean, just uh, if you lo uh, look at the use of Hoffman the Loeffler reaction uh, the starting metal should be uh, starting metal should be the corresponding uh, the uh, starting metal should be corresponding uh, this amino ester amino ester this ester here is NH2 and NH2 and this hydrogen and that is it that is it. So, it is simple uh, so simple I, I do not have the yield of this reaction here, uh, but what do you do? Uh, of course, uh, that is this is important. The protonation is important. Once you do a protonation, the reaction actually uh, undergoes proton, uh, proton, uh, protonated uh, nitrogen under this condition. I can, um, by uh, the, the halogenation takes place. Actually, halogenation is uh, the halogenated compound is little unstable. N chloro compounds are little unstable, very unstable. So you protonate that, stabilize that. Then you do the radical reactions and. And then I follow the rest of the reaction. So, uh, so you get a five member uh, heterocycle, five member heterocycles. And another special case, there may be, uh, let us say, <coughs> there is another special. This is a special case. It uh, gives you uh, two important things, actually, it uh, represents two important things. In this case, once again the reaction is uh, NCS, this uh, NCS, NCS. So, what do you expect? So, uh, the uh, uh, six member enclosure in this case. In, in this case, it is, I mean, so uh, radical is formed here, right? Then 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, there, uh, actually, uh, there is no I mean, there are there is no actually sixth uh, atom hydrogen. So you have a hydrogen. The sixth carbon means seven. That means it will form a seven-membered ring. And in this case, another important factor you have to note that the uh, if you recall that the alpha position of a nitrogen is stabilized. Alpha alpha carbon ion, sorry, uh, sorry, alpha carbocation, alpha radical, and alpha carbon. All these three uh, uh, intermediates are stabilized by the nitrogen lone pair, not the corresponding anion. So, considering that, that means the radical here at the alpha position of this nitrogen should be more stable, this hydrogen is abstracted. So, in one shot, uh, you can get this uh, ring closure done, and so you will have, have a <coughs> phenanthrin systems. So, phenanthrolin system basically, you have two nitrogens in the phenanthrolin systems without, without much problem. Okay. So, what does it tell you? That uh, nitrogen radical reactions could be possible. Nitrogen radical reaction, we will have more, I mean, maybe one or two examples. I, I think um, as an exercise, we will have uh, uh, example, but uh, uh, so this is uh, okay. 
next next is a very important one i mean a heterocycle can do anything heterocycle can uh, uh, change the course of a reaction change the course of a reactions let us uh, look at a special uh, yes in the previous example acid is not required uh, should be required should be required but uh, in this case this is an intermolecular reaction and uh, i have no idea uh, in, in fact that's what i was thinking actually the uh, reference uh, from where I got, I think doesn't mention any because uh, it basically it's intermolecular reactions, okay. And um, uh, then you have a double effect. You can say the other nitrogen is dictating the radical formation. So uh, it is so fast probably then immediately goes to the second radical, uh, okay. Uh, that means alpha carbon radical. And then once you have this uh, rightly placed uh, for the formation of this ring, probably, okay. I'll check with. Uh, okay, uh, let us see. Uh, let us see one more is a special reaction. This is a uh, reaction published in uh, 2010 uh, in a journal, uh, very uh, popular journal. Uh, I do not know whether you know or not. Uh, this is known as uh, Nature Chemistry. I do not know whether you have heard it or not. Have you? Huh? What is it? It is a, a very famous uh, journal. And if you uh, publish, it uh, will be famous overnight. Okay. Uh, <coughs> let us see. Let us see. Let us see. Uh, this, this is a kind of reaction we never thought of actually. Uh, uh, you have two phenyl ring, and now we have a methoxy here and iodine here. So just simple aromatics. Uh, these days, many of you know that these. Uh, combining two aromatic units uh, is a special topic in organic chemistry because it can uh, simplify many major pro pro obstacles in uh, uh, medicinal chemistry and almost always one of the aromatic ring is uh, um, required uh, for medicinal activities. Most of the medicinal agents will have at least one um, aromatic ring system. Okay. So, that is the reason I think you all know that last year we had three Nobel laureate working in the same similar areas right and uh, let us say how to combine these two how to combine these two that means uh, <coughs> uh, the product should be the uh, product should be something like uh, this so it's a uh, say basically uh, what you have to do you have to uh, reduce this and um, by now all of you know these three famous reactions Right, so, Suzuki reaction, Negesi coupling, and Heck coupling. All of you know, and so all the three couplings will have a similar end products. Only the requirements on the left hand side is, uh, is different. Like, you recall, okay, Suzuki. So, all of them will have halogenated compounds. All of them will have the halogenated compounds. Um, so, uh, and the only the uh, new halogenated or uh, um, active plates, etc., etc. But in this case, how to solve this problem? What can you do? Any idea? Then you have a halogen, fine. And if you compare this reactions as is, uh, with um, the negacy, uh, all these couplings, what you will find that there is another commonality of all these reactions that the, all these three reactions require palladium as a catalyst. That means, basically, what is the function of palladium? Palladium is to we can the carbon halogen bonds from high school or honors level we have been uh, learning that if an halogen is attached to an sp2 carbon atom because of the resonance of the lone pair of the electrons of the halogens uh, into the aromatic ring system these uh, carbon halogen bonds are tighter bonds i mean not weak bonds so somehow you have to make these halogen carbon bonds to, uh, weak and that is possible by insertion of palladium into those bonds okay so that is one of the uh, first requirements of any kind of coupling reactions okay and <coughs> so in this case how do you do it uh, there is another way, that mean, uh, okay but uh, at the same time you have to have a nucleophile so that means once the carbon halogen bond is weakened that means that becomes electrophil okay Electro electrophilic bond so the what is what should be the nucleophilic bond then in the, in the in the the coupling reactions the in case of heck which one is the nucleophile olefin in the, the suzuki it is the boronate it boronate means actually eight complex of the boronic acids and in the of course 
the other organometallic source for the negacy is the organo zinc normally organo zinc in some cases organo aluminum etcetera. Okay. So, that means, you have a, but where is the nucleophile here? This benzene has to be nucleophile then. How to make it nucleophile? I mean if you have a good electrophile in this case in this example. So, uh, the answer lies here. Uh, no, what do you do? Uh, this is I mean I do not know this is something really uh, peculiar though this uh, 110 phenanthrolene. So, you will add another base another base and uh, the stoichiometrically H i is coming out. So, you have to have a stoichiometric base and in this case the base is potassium tertiary beta oxide potassium tertiary beta oxide and this is a 110 phenanthrolene this is a catalyst. So, you have a catalytic amount and, um, and the temperature required is again is the steam temperature that is 100 degree centigrade. So, that way the reaction is very simple that means, within your control 100 degree means it is a standard temperature okay. and the yield wise is very good I mean almost always uh, greater than 80 percent. So, you see that means, you do not need these that these palladium 0 etcetera all these things just simple uh, phenanthrolene and we have been uh, uh, hearing about the phenanthrolene from the analytical chemistry right. 110 phenanthrolene is a nice uh, complexing reagent in analytical chemistry. So, it is a very commonly available reagent potassium tertiary butoxide also a commonly reagent I mean. So, what do you do I mean it is an un, unbelievable reaction. So, what is then uh, I mean. So, there is no activation now there is no activation of the carbon halogen bond then what is then what, what is the explanation. The explanation is that it is enhancement of the enhancement of the basic property of potassium tertiary beta oxide. So, you had a base potassium tertiary beta oxide you are enhancing the basicity of the base that is potassium tertiary by using another heterocyclic base another heterocyclic base and the, the explanation that, that has been given uh, is like this. So, <coughs> you have a penanthrol nucleus nitrogen and apparently uh, it uh, complexes with um, potassium tertiary butoxide uh, potassium first get complexes with um, uh, com get complexed with um, phenanthrolene nitrogen and so we obviously this is plus this is minus and um, uh, assume to be they have uh, weak interaction there and then you, you have benzene hydrogen benzene hydrogen the as if so uh, benzene hydrogen as if uh, complexes with uh, uh, oxygen. So, result is this is as equivalent to kind of a thing as a that kind of a thing say phenyl minus is a phenyl minus. So, this is an uh, this is an explanation I mean it, it may be wrong, but uh, at least this is an working explanations why uh, this reaction is taking place. Of course, you can see uh, iodine is fairly weaker than carbon chlorine and carbon bonds. Okay, and uh, <coughs> so that means uh, in this case again, a uh, heterocycle is being base uh, used as a base, and it is enhancing the basic property of a standard uh, base. And what else can we um, uh, do with um, uh, these heterocycles? And here, uh, basically, we are trying to see, you know, what are the other special cases? What else you can think of? Uh, we have so far talked about um, the pk value changes the neighboring group participation we have talked about and all of us know that the uh, modulation of the uh, nucleophilic reactions and electrophilic reactions right. Uh, so, like say if you have a pyridine that uh, all of all of us know right we will maybe we will come, um, say um, if you have pyridine the electrophilic substitution reaction takes place at uh, 3 position position. So, that I think uh, quickly quickly. So, if you have pyridine so the electrophilic substitution takes place at 3 position and when, uh, then if you have uh, pyrrole and indole etcetera the 5 azole systems then the reaction takes place at 2 position right. And then uh, if you have <laughs> indole let us say 5 and 6 fuse together. Uh, so, it is the uh, 3 position right 3 position. So, all of us know that. So, uh, that means, the, uh, because of the nitrogen the positions of the electrophilic and nucleophilic uh, centers uh, change. 
Okay. Then uh, the, there are cases of uh, uh, the reactions uh, there are this um, like um, Hoffman Lofner you have already said that basically is a uh, photochemistry like Norris type 1 or 2 Norris type 2. What is Norris type 2 and Norris type 1? There is, a, there is a difference, right? But uh, that is all these reactions actually guided by uh, all the guided by the heteroatom, though. It has to have an heteroatom, not is one, not is two, whatever. Uh, okay. uh, you need a carbonyl group, you need a carbonyl group. In one case, uh, the alpha bond is broken, the other case, beta bond is broken. The beta bond is broken due to this. Okay. Uh, like um, uh, we, ha we had done a reaction. So, these are, these are all the effects of the heteroatoms. Um, we had done a reaction of this kind and um, uh, in our uh, rooftop, sorry, 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 sorry. this is not a, 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 okay. Uh, you take this, <coughs> that means heteroatom is a very important uh, atom. Uh, it can uh, dictate a lot of uh, new reactions uh, like this one and if you uh, just uh, put it in sunlight uh, take a solution of the compound take a solution of the compound and then uh, put it on the roof uh, during, uh, during uh, daylight okay what do you expect it's a nice reaction i mean the yield of is often more than 70 percent uh, more than 70 percent more than 70 percent okay uh, exactly what we did we had a solution of um, chloroform solution of this material in a test tube and the test tube was covered with a piece of cotton plug and uh, the whole test tube was put in a beaker and it was left in the uh, roof. Then uh, around 5 6 hours after we check the TLC, the study material is gone, you get a nice product. Okay. If you look at uh, our papers, you will see very nice reaction, there, very selective reaction. Important is most cases, if you use an oxidizing agent, there are all kinds of possibilities, all kinds. I mean, um, in the next tomorrow, we will talk about oxidation in heterocyclic chemistry, you will see a diverse range of oxidation reactions. When I say diverse range of oxidation, reactions, for example, dehydrogenation is an oxidation reaction because you are pulling out the hydrogen. So, likewise, there are plenty of oxidation. Aromatization is an oxidation reaction basically. So, next time you will see there are at least 10, 15 different kinds of oxidation would be taking place if you have a nitrogen. Uh, similarly, you have oxygen up here. Actually, uh, if you follow this knowledge type 1 and 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So, so specific the reaction uh, takes place uh, to give you uh, this ketone up here, this ketone. Actually, you get the hydro peroxide, uh, this oxygen, this our this aerial oxygen probably gets converted into uh, this uh, well uh, it is difficult to comment. Uh, many times of course, uh, this, uh, this regular oxygen is sensitized to single oxygen, right? single oxygen, uh, so in, uh, but uh, in this case whether single oxygen is involved or not, in order type 1 and 2, this single oxygen uh, is difficult to say, but uh, uh, the intermediate would be uh, of this kind, intermediate with the hydro peroxide. Once the radical is formed, it picks up the hydrogen from the uh, oxygen from the air and it gets hydrogen. And all of us can guess uh, this uh, water comes out and goes to the ketone, goes to the ketone. Okay, so uh, so then we have talked about the tertiary amino effects, and and uh, in the fourth year we talked about the chelation effect. I, I think all of you know that uh, it, it has no bearing to this one, chelation effect. Yes, right. Uh, all ortholithiation metallization would require an heteroatom. Heteroatom, heterocyclic chemistry, we have talked about the Myers reagent. Myers reagent, Myers reagent is again a heterocycle, it has a nitrogen, it can undergo a chelation with neighboring carbon ion, etcetera, it stabilizes. And uh, like uh, one of the examples uh, could be 
uh, one of the examples could be suppose uh, you have a um, uh, carbo carboxylic acid carboxylic acid uh, you can um, uh, convert this uh, by now you must be knowing the how to convert this into this oxazolidine oxazolidine uh, you have nitrogen up here oxygen and this right this is called myers oxazolidine and nowadays myers oxazolidine also is a six member oxazolidine so it means you have to own uh, one can also think of uh, the six member ring here now put uh, let us say methyl lithium i think i will write butyl lithium how is that butyl lithium what would you expect ortho uh, possible possible yes this is uh, in case of naphthalene actually it is not so there is a <coughs> so another possibility is there that means this is now basically a kind of shift base and it is is an electrophile actually uh, in this case uh, in this case uh, what do you expect uh, just d aromatization taking place so it is a, a d aromatization taking place so you will get a d aromatization done that means only partially d aromatization uh, would take place uh, simply because you can guess because had it been a benzene you would have expected ortholithiation like what you said but it is not a benzene case uh, a naphthalene case naphthalene case how do you uh, differentiate naphthalene and benzene in terms of principle less uh, louder regeneration is less so d aromatization is easier that's why in, uh, uh, if you are uh, following my work rather our work you will see most cases we try to dearomatize the naphthalene part simply because it is easier to do uh, let us say many of you know this coupling reactions aryl biaryl coupling coupling oxidative coupling when oxidative coupling uh, you must have heard right you take beta naphthol add ferric chloride what do you get vinyl but why not the phenol so if that is actually the phenol uh, coupling uh, oxidative coupling is tougher because of the aromatase so here in this case this possibility is uh, <laughs> is there and what you get is a partial dearomatization and th this sort of dearomatization is tougher again one of the ways to dearomatize this molecule uh, is is what birch reduction but birch reduction will have you know it will reduce extensively to a place where it is uh, completely dearomatized means completely uh, sorry deconjugated completely deconjugated eventually in birch reduction you will have a product with a single double bond for example if you do a birch reduction uh, with a naphthalene so uh, i think this is a uh, net nice uh, get question what is the product so 1 4 dihydro not 1 4 is this right normally it comes to that also i mean of course yes you can arguably say you can arguably say yes there are there are some amount of could be this but any case but eventually some of some of the molecules gets converted to this one after aromatase um, i mean you know so has to be that means in any case you have uh, less well defined product here you like a mixture of the products but in this case you get nice well defined product and partially dehydrated um, uh, dearomatized and uh, the last uh, last topic here very quickly uh, this is uh, with, with today's last topic i think um, we will talk about these pyridine chemistry a little bit pyridine is a as imine pyridine is as imine okay when i say so that means uh, 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 when i uh, that imine means all of us know basically it's a shift space and if you look at pyridine so you have a nice shift space here nice shift space here right now if you have um, uh, two chloropyridine and an h2 i think without uh, in no time uh, 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 chlorine would be replaced uh, by an h2 chlorine will be replaced by NH2. Analogy, you can uh, think about uh, let us say just like acid chloride for example or imine chloride for example. 
if you react with acid chloride with uh, NH2 minus and uh, just you form the corresponding amide corresponding amide. So, it is just that means the pyridine uh, is equivalent to a structural uh, or functional moiety of amine uh, rather imine carbon double bond nitrogen. So, that means it is a reaction typically called I think all of us know uh, addition and elimination reaction fine and then also I think by now also know you know that if you want to do a homologation study let us say begin with let us say this one uh, 2 methyl pyridine to 2 ethyl pyridine right. So, C H 2 and C H 3. So, what cross coupling would do <laughs> or anything simple reaction right. So, it is just like a uh, just like again that let us say uh, acetaldehyde for example, uh, acetaldehyde for example, if you have or rather ketone. So, uh, how to homologate this? LDA and methyl iodide, LDA, you just pull out the base here and the methyl iodide ok and uh, in fact, uh, similarly so you can just take nitrogen and the CH 3 here imine and then you can uh, pull out the base here hydrogen and form the carbon ion and then uh, do this uh, alkylation study right alkylation study. So, th this uh, this you have already studied before in the fourth year professor Pasak taught I remember uh, what is that SAM SAM no 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 I think SAM RAM SAM right now I remember. Uh, oh, oh Prasad Nanda is teaching right now. Oh, okay. Last class is okay. So, what it is? What it is? Very good. Yes. Very good. Very good. So, actually, what do you do? The you form this is uh, amine that means then you form this hydrazone. So, once you form the hydrazone uh, essentially you get a structure of this kind. So, the imine structure and you have an so, uh, uh, next carbon and hydrogen. So, because of the imine function you get the CH2 activated to and it is easily deprotonated. Similarly, in this case you do, do a deprotonation here LDA and then required amount of methyl iodide. Mind it you have you have to also keep it in mind there is a probability of nitrogen alkylation. Suppose you take 2 methyl pyridine and add methyl iodide what do you expect? The, the quaternary salt would be produced quaternary salt nitrogen would be produced uh, uh, forming the quaternary salt. So, uh, you have that means, but uh, once you have a carbon ion up here then the alkylation should proceed in this manner and then uh, similarly you take again LDA it is quite uh, standard reactions nowadays and then uh, take uh, um, aldehyde. So, uh, typically what you will find this is this is a reaction this is a reaction <coughs> OH and R. So, what is this reaction? So, we, we can say an aldol reaction aldol reaction it is very similar to this aldol reactions ok and what else do you expect that means to prove that pyridine is an amine there are other reactions on like um, uh, if you let us say <coughs> uh, react this vinyl pyridine vinyl pyridine and um, and then add let us say r2 nh that means now no catalyst nothing that means both are now uh, nucleophilic Amination to the double bond, right? Perfectly all right. Amination to the double bond. That means it's a sort of a you know, Michael addition kind of things. So what you'll see uh, is R and R and uh, Michael addition. Okay. Uh, I mean similarly, uh, you just uh, take um, dimethyl mal malonate. Dimethyl malonate. What you'll find. Uh, Michael addition again. So, uh, Michael addition again uh, Michael addition will be uh, taking place and uh, 
So, that means, I mean all these indications all these reactivity profiles are in analogy with the means or, or, or equivalent to a carbonyl group basically so a carbonyl group. And uh, last example today last example is uh, Mukai MR reagent. I told you right. What is it? Again, it's an heterocyclic molecule. It's an heterocyclic molecule, and the structure would be like this. Two chloro. That means it's just like an acid chloride. Just like an acid chloride, and it's a quaternary salt. And the counter ion is this one. So, 2 iodo, 1 uh, methyl <coughs> pyridinium iodide, pyridinium iodide. What is the use? Uh, uh, methylation probably, yes, uh, that, that, that could have been an important one though, um, but uh, in this case, actually, this is a uh, agent for. Uh, esterification, uh, esterification reactions. So, uh, if you take uh, carboxylic acid, that means uh, carboxylic acid and let us say uh, alcohol. So, what do you see? You get an esterification done. That's it. And also, uh, sometimes it is uh, used as a dehydration agent, dehydrating agent. Basically, uh, it picks up the water, picks up water. Okay, and uh, I think mechanism wise quite simple. The basically, uh, sometimes also used for uh, making peptide bonds. Sometimes there is also in peptide bond. Ruki Budhir will write a term paper on this. So essentially, it's a uh, equivalent to DCC. DCC. So, it will pick up water from esters uh, sorry from acid and alcohols or from this amide bond formations uh, during peptide formation bond formation and the mechanistically so it is an imine and acid chloride and so it first uh, activates the carboxylic acid. So, what you will see and <coughs> the chlorine is displaced by the carboxylic acid the oxygen and you have a CH3 of this that is it. So, oxygen gets uh, replaced this chlorine and now uh, this is uh, this pyridinium ion acts as a good living group. So, just like an anhydride kind of thing and so, so then let us say you have methanol, uh, methanol. So, what do you expect? Uh, this goes to carboxylic acid and then so, the byproduct here is byproduct here is uh, is pyridone 2 methyl pyridone. So, okay. so uh, and, and this I mean it is not that popular, but in most many cases uh, this has been the preferred reagent. Uh, th um, and, uh, the <laughs> there are uh, advantages like one of the advantages is that, that this can be this pyridone can be uh, easily uh, recovered or, e or easily separated. But if you are let us say working with the DCC, many of you know there is a, uh, any, there is a serious problem in DCC. Uh, what is the problem? DCC dies cyclocarbodiamide. Huh? Why? Uh, insoluble. Actually, you know, not water insoluble, even many it is uh, insoluble in many organic solvents. Okay. So, and uh, <coughs> So, that takes care of these uh, most of these uh, special effects of this nitrogen and uh, then uh, uh, there is another special effects uh, that is exhibited by nitrogen as a radical reactions carbon radical reactions okay. and uh, the re reactions uh, uh, is called uh, Minsky reactions Minsky reaction. Okay. Oh, Minsky reaction what is it? basically it produces the car carbon radical. Uh, let me uh, just uh, give you an example which is quite striking though. 
let us say you have a uh, compound called <coughs> benzimidazole, okay? not sorry, benz thiazole, benz thiazole. Imidazole will have two nitrogens, benz imidazole. Now, let us say you want to convert this uh, into a or a functionalize, let us say with this. That means, you are adding a carbon at a specific position and if you look at the structure, you will see all the carbons are non equivalent, none of the because of the presence of sulfur and nitrogen, this is uh, the, all these carbons are non equivalent in terms of symmetry. So, obviously, also it should be non equivalent in terms of the reactivity. Now, you want to accomplish a transformation, so where it would incorporate an amide and an amide group at these two position. So, how do you do? I mean of course, there are solutions, plenty of solutions. I am talking about, I uh, will be talking about a, uh, a reaction actually is so specific in nitrogen chemistry, especially in nitrogen chemistry. The nitrogen radical uh, is a stable radical. To, uh, when we talked about the Hoffman Loeffler reactions, we talked about this nitrogen radical. Nitrogen radical is very fairly stable, especially uh, if you have uh, nitrogen close to aromatic ring systems. Okay. Uh, so, this in this example, let us say uh, the starting material is um, starting material is. That is it. So, formamide very easy study material, very cheap study material. How to couple them? If you look at basically, I mean, if you to take an atom counting or do an atom counting, what you will find that you have to remove two hydrogen, which is equivalent to an oxidation reaction. Oxidation reaction. Okay. So, so you have to use an oxidizing agent, and oxidizing agent means you have to look for the chemicals arising out of the right and right top corner of the periodic table. Okay. So, oxygen oxy or uh, the metal oxidants or metal oxidant and um, the commonest oxidizing agent is oxygen, oxygen, ozone, hydrogen peroxide, oxygen quantum materials right? and hydrogen peroxide is one of the commonest one, but in this case the, the this is this is it that is a metal hydroperoxide simply because they are more so, hydrogen peroxide is water soluble. Tertiary metal hydroperoxide is even even soluble in also in benzene. In fact, uh, the reagents also is commercially available in benzene solution. Have you seen? No. Uh, benzene solution. Okay. And then, but that is not enough. You have to activate it. How do you do it? Huh? Uh, what is that? Oh, no. You all know now. How to decompose uh, hydrogen peroxide? No. Right. Sorry, sorry. Ferrous sulfate. So if you put iron, it has Fenton's reagent, right? Just Fenton's reagent. So it's a, it's a hydro. It's a very simple. And the, uh, this, uh, if you just have this, I think heat it, and in one step you get this. Or what is the intermediate? So we'll, we actually will have plenty of examples. This is radical reaction is very useful in organic chemistry, I mean, heterocyclic chemistry. Many times, uh, I think uh, we have talked about this in fourth year. Why uh, radical chemistry is very useful in organic chemistry? One of the reasons why is because it's very selective. If the reaction takes place at a certain place, it will take place only at that place. Number one. Number two. Reagent is light. Uh, reagent is light. 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 So, it, it, it cannot pick up. So, when you have a sort of a non polar hydrogen, it can pick up nicely. 
Okay, that is the ad another advantage. Second advantage, third advantage, radical chemistry. Quick, I taught in the fourth year. Normally, it does not cause any elimination reaction, beta elimination reactions. If you have a base, base can uh, expel the beta uh, living group, but radical reaction it will not. So, these are the, the three, uh, but, but the drawbacks of course, are there. So, you see and in this case what is happening, uh, a radical is being produced at the carbon center, at the car carbon center and you have a neighboring nitrogen, probably that also this um, both oxygen and nitrogen probably uh, oxygen and, and nitrogen probably stabilizes the radical, probably I am not sure. Okay. And there is also a uh, terminology used also if a radical is both stabilized by uh, electron withdrawing groups and electron donating groups. Uh, so, what, what is the name? Captorative. Very good, captorative effects, possibly that. And then once it adds to the uh, thiazole system, so what you will find? So, if the radical is uh, stabilized, then you have. Uh, So, you have a uh, now uh, radical gen radical generated okay. and uh, next what again this hydrogen is lost by the uh, oxidizing agent and the, the driving force here is again aerodicity. So, so you have a series of reactions actually taking place, but essentially the reaction is taking. So, you have now seen that a nice way of nice way of producing a carbon radical. Okay. So, <coughs> we will have uh, more examples next time. Uh, 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 Let us go. Uh, you have come late also. Had you come before, I would have started earlier. Okay. Uh, 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 make it a point next time you come uh, to like tomorrow we will meet at uh, 3 o'clock. So, you come at 2 45. How is that? Okay. Uh, so, um,